Rolling. Now I'm going to solder it back. And I'm going to solder these motor leads. No cold solder joints. No cold solder joints. That's the nice thing about having these on. I can see that quite well. Let's try not to burn the cord this time. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Got the cord back on. Now what's left? Just putting the two pieces together. Putting the two halves together. Wow. I don't need these. All right, we shall clamshell it back together. It'll go down. And we're gonna be real careful we don't hit that circuit board. Oh, look at there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Make sure it turns freely because uh, sometimes these housings you have to center them up. You're right. I ran into that once before, remember? Mm hmm. Okay, cool. Beautiful. That sounds good too. Oh yeah. Feels like new in there. Purse like a kitten. Now, these things, if you put that little dot right there, and it's hard to see on the camera, you probably lose focus. There's a little it. dot, ding, right there on the end of the shaft, a little dot. Point that dot straight up towards the, uh, the zero degree. See, there's all these marks zero or zero sorry i guess it would be 90. that's zero zero 45 90 135 180 225 so if you put that straight up and down what it does is that puts that magnet where it'll just go whoop and find that magnet pretty quick if you put it over here like this if it's like right here somewhere i think like here somewhere it'll have to go all the way around to find it because it just passed it sometimes it'll fault so i always just stick them there Let's uh, let's go play with it. Let's see if it works. We fix the cord, we check the circuit board, put all new bearings and everything in. Let's go play with it. Uh, let's go put it on a tester. Okay. Rolling. Okay, I got it all back together. Um, I got it lined up. I got the little dot facing forward, and uh, I have this old turbo housing that is torn up. Let me show this on the camera here. Let me get my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, it's, you can see it's eat out. It's, it's actually a destroyed housing. I got it from a local turbo shop that rebuilds turbos. Uh, but the, the VG and the arm and all that still function properly. It's kind of cool. It's just the inner housing here. You can kind of see how it works there. That's kind of cool. But um, it's got the sector gear on it. And uh, I just, I'm just gonna manually line this up. Uh, and I'm gonna drop this, line this pin up and drop this, this thing on here. And it does fit. So let's go ahead and take her off again and set her down there so we can do the calibration. And I'm gonna use my trusty turbo box that I designed and built. My little contraption here, my mad scientist project. Uh, made for an Arduino. So I'm just gonna connect this up. I'm going to turn this on. Oh, it bring, brought it to life. I'm going to say get data claim address information. And uh, let's see what happens here. Bingo, it's communicating, it's working. Looks like we have a serial number. It says it's a whole set. Um, we have a 
function code actuator is what it's called and it's default position okay so uh, let's go to uh, install to the VGT and this is the same as like Commons Insight or one of the other programs to calibrate the turbo it's the same process same same uh, set of commands um, install onto turbo which would be the first calibration and it sets it at 5% 4.9 it's ready to do that so now it's ready to sit down on there and uh, the receptor gear is off by a little bit yeah we got it too far over let's do this again uh, there we go It would help if we had this aligned properly, which would be about right there. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. Install, it's ready to go. Oh, beautiful. You get the gear lined up correctly, it goes right on there. Like say, if it was on a turbo or a truck or something, I'd use the an allen wrench and do it the right way but i'm just testing it all right now i'm going to hit calibrate i'm going to hold this because it only has one pin hole and there's a little bit of play so let me go ahead and hit uh hit calibrate and i will hold this here we go calibrate successful now we can go to manual and we can check it Beautiful. Very, very low resistance. Goes to 100%. Goes to 0%. And you can see that thing doing its thing here. Oh, what's this thing going on? How's that coil cool like? <laughs> of course, I can put it in uh, seek mode and make it run back and forth. And the little oscilloscope shows how much resistance it has. Watch, if you uh, you hold it really hard, you can see it making resistance. See? Mm -hmm. Here we go, slow it down so you can see it a little better. There we go, watch. That's the negative resistance, watch. Oh, this thing's got a lot of power. I can't stop it with my thumbs. <laughs> Yeah, works good. I think we have a good actuator. From bad to good. Mm -hmm. Alright. That's uh like I say this isn't a professional how to rebuild these actuator videos. We're just, you know, I just decided I wanted to fix it, try to put new bearings in it. Um you know, just do the best I can and uh kind of restore it like it is. So I can use it on my truck if I ever want to, or I can play with it, experiment with it. So, but uh, it should be like, you know, it should last several years if I did put it on my, I think it would last several years again. Cause most of what goes bad is the bearings and stuff and they just dry up. So that's what I know. Uh, maybe it helps somebody out there that's stuck on the side of the road or maybe they, you know, want to tackle the thing themselves. I don't know, but uh, like I said, you should probably find some professional manuals if you want to do it professionally or something. Anyways, that's all I got for today.